We're just a couple of minutes away from getting started. Uh, thanks for everybody for coming out on this election night. I hope everybody's had a chance to go vote. And if not, hopefully we can get through this pretty quick and everybody can go vote before you, before you go to the House. So really do appreciate it. Our chairman, Kevin Parsley, was not able to be here tonight due to some medical issues. And so my name is Brian Powell and I'm the vice chair. So I'll be conducting this meeting tonight. And uh, as we get fixed to get ready to get started, uh, we're going to do our pre-meeting activities. Uh, if you'll join me, stand with me and join for the Pledge of Allegiance, then our invocation will be given by Mr. Dale Tyler. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Frank? Heavenly Father, we are just thankful for the city, the state, and the country that you allowed us to live in. Right. <coughs> our blessings. Pray that we make the best decisions for our town tonight. Pray that we pray for our commissioner that's not here tonight, Kevin Parsley. We pray for his father. Just pray that that you comfort them and and ease the pain in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We have a quorum tonight, so I'm going to call this uh, meeting uh, to order. Roll call, please. Gary Compton. Here. Roy Cover. Here. Dee Dee Haney. Here. Shannon Mueller. Here. Peyton Parker. Here. Aaron Panato. Here. Brian Powell. Here. Dale Tyler. Here. Next item on the agenda will be the approval of our minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Minutes are approved. That take us to item five. We'll be at our public hearing, rezoning. It'll be R18-39, Landmark Custom Homes, LLC, west side of South Downham, north side of West County Line Road, from SF2 to PUD, presented by Engineering Services Incorporated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. I'm here representing um, this project uh, for Landmark Custom Homes. Um, this project is located um, on the northwest corner of the intersection of County Line Road and Downham. Uh, it's approximately 47 acres. Um, currently zoned SF2, um, and we are requesting that uh, this project be, or this property be rezoned to PUD. Um, and I'll uh, answer any questions. Staff comments. The uh, adopted comprehensive land use plan indicates medium density residential use for the area. The rezoning request is in keeping with the following goals and policies of the comprehensive land use plan is recommended for approval. Protect the positive aspects of neighborhood character throughout the city. Appropriate locations for single family and multifamily residential developments should be provided based on accessibility, site suitability, utility availability, neighborhood compatibility, and environmental factors. Assure adequate and allocate land allocation for residential purposes by providing lots of adequate size. Encourage the development of a variety of housing types acceptable to the size and income of all the households living and working in Springdale. The development plan is attached, and I want to go through the details of this because this is a plan unit development. This is, gives us the opportunity to set standards that the developer has proposed and would be approved with this PUD as it is approved. It is a, and, and Jason, you need to correct me as, as we go along to make sure we get all this together. The project is 46.5 acres. It will be designated as, a, as residential on the land use plan. As, as uh, Jason said, it is currently zoned SF2. It would go to a plan unit development. The owner and developer is land, Landmark Custom Homes, LLC. Um, they are proposing the project to be in three phases, though that at this point they intend to pretty well start it out, but we are giving them the opportunity to be able to do it in three phases and that's what we would be approving tonight. Uh, they have met with staff from the very beginning. We've been through this process pretty, pretty detailed. They met with the Planning Commission to talk about 
concern from the very beginning, so this project has been looked at by all of us for quite some time. The uh, project name right now is Cottages at the Park, and is that something that we're pretty sure that's what's going to stay? It doesn't matter. It's just that it's hard. It's hard for us to track when you change the name. So, if, yes. if you need to change it, please let me know as quickly as possible so we can make sure we get. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The use units that will be allowed in this planned unit development include uh, use unit one, which is citywide public uses by right, use unit four, which are cultural, recreational, and health facilities. The community pool is is for that use unit. Use unit eight, which is single family dwellings. Use Unit 9, which is a zero lot line, and Use Unit 34, which is a model home or a temporary mark and temporary marketing office. The density of this project <coughs> will be 181 single family lots on 44.7 acres, which, which is about four lots per acre. 2.5 acres will be uh, open space, uh, together with the 100 plus acres of the open areas adjoining in the Shaw Family Park. The lots will be 50 foot wide by 125 and 125 feet deep. Uh, and there are some others that will be 60 to 65 wide by 125 foot deep. These will be zero lot lined uh, lots, which will mean the building setbacks include a 12 foot front setback. Uh, they will have garages at the rear of each one of these structures. The interior size will be zero on one side and 12 on the opposite side. Um, the exterior side along the street right away will be five feet and the rear will be a 25 foot setback. The uh, residence will be built on the lots will necessarily be long and narrow as well. All homes will have large two lane streets in front and they will be accessed by alleys in the back. Uh, I get this up here where I can see it. Print's getting smaller as I get older. I think that's what it is. The 12 foot front building setback will allow for the front of houses to be located close to the street to create a feeling of a community. Um, it, in, it is anticipated that all the homes will be constructed with front porches to enhance the inviting nature of the neighborhood and encourage interaction between both residents and visitors to the neighborhood. All lots will have rear loading garages with driveways with access to the alleyways. Um, between the home and the street will be a short sidewalk, which gives connectivity to the, uh, to the street, to the sidewalk system, and all the front yards will be landscaped. Uh, minimum requirements for installation and maintenance of landscaping at the front of the homes will be specified in the covenants and enforced by the Property Owners Association. All the yards and the landscaping will be maintained by the POA. And with that maintenance of all that, it gives a very consistent look to the, to the subdivision as a whole. They will have the opportunity to fence in some areas, and if that's the case, they have to work around, out arrangement with a POA for those kind of uh, maintenance. Uh, the rear setbacks are proposed to be 25 feet. That gives sufficient space for the uh, garages and so that cars will not be uh, parked in the alleyway. Uh, again, I just went over this, the setback requirements. I don't have to go over those again. In phase one, which includes 57 lots, uh, the houses are anticipated to be 1,800 square feet. Phase two, which includes 68 lots, will be um, square footage of near 2,200 square feet and 56 lots in the third phase will be houses in excess or of 2,700 square feet. They have presented to us uh, elevations of what the anticipated houses will look like. Uh, those will be included in the uh, packet as well, uh, as well as the type of materials that we use in the subdivision. Uh, they anticipate using uh, brick and stone. I may be getting ahead of myself because sometimes my notes get ahead of myself. Uh, brick and stone, uh, manufactured stone, there will be no vinyl, and concrete siding or hardy board will be used as the materials. Um, they have presented a maintenance plan, a management plan that shows there will be no uh, garages can be lived in. 
There will not be any uh, uh, ex uh, dwellings or garages that will be converted to living units. Uh, they will inc include a community swimming pool that will be accessible for the residents of the of the putt only. Uh, they are have ex have an extensive uh, trail and sidewalk access to go between the the individual lots and the park that's next door. Uh, lighting will be uh, accomplished with decorative fixtures that will be maintained by the PRA. Uh, so phase one with 57 lots has a density of four lots per acre. Phase two has a 66 lots at a density of 4.5 lots per acre. Phase three has 3.5. The total in, uh, development itself is 3.9, which is no, no more dense than the SF2. We just have controls with this project that we would not get if it was not a PUD. They will have uh, 9,660 square feet of common open space in the park-like area between phase one and phase two. Uh, the total open space is 108,350 square feet, slightly under what our normal requirements are for a PUD, but that's the amount that is being proposed. Uh, the rest of that is the management tools that they are putting in place. The only question that I have remaining, and I sent it to Daniel late today and didn't get an answer, is, how soon will the POA be established? And we need to make sure that it is established before there is any occupancy of any of the, of the structures. So we have that organization in place to do all the maintenance and everything that needs to be. Yes, ma'am. So that's the highlights. Yes. There's more details if y'all need to see that. The documents that you receive from the table, it shows all the things that were on there. Erin, uh, can you go through and, and show the pictures? This is what the entire thing looks is laid out with. It has limited access to Downham Road and to County Line Road. It has access on each of the ends of those streets to the park itself. It has the main entrance, which will have a sign on coming off of Downham and then a sign on County Line Road as well. We'll go to the next one. Uh, that kind of shows the connection between the two with the trail systems and the sidewalks. And the next one, is that the last one? Typical layouts of how all the structures will be on the zero lot lines. We, we have to make sure that we meet the fire code so that the structure itself is on, not on the zero lot line. And we need to meet again and talk about this E thing with the fire codes to make sure we don't have an issue. Yeah, that's why we went with 12 foot on the set, on the, on the, the setback for the side. That's not the zero side so that we would ensure that we would have that um, over 10 foot of from Eve to Eve, so that's. We just need to make sure the language is clear and the drawings right. are clear that we have that. So building inspection and fire department can make sure those are. That's the only other issue that we have. Left, so. okay. I can answer questions if anybody or Jason Keen or anybody else here. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to address this issue? Yes, sir. If you would come up to the microphone and uh, state your name and address, please. Okay. My name's Ronnie Rothwell. I live in Plantation Estates in Elba Springs. Uh, our subdivision is going to be almost due south, southeast of that. We're on the south side of County Line Road. Could you pull your microphone up, please? Thank you. Uh, live in Plantation Estates in Elm Springs. Our subdivision is going to be on the south side of County Line Road, just right across from there. Right. My main question is not so much about the development, but the traffic, the road system. Are, are there plans to improve the roads out there because they are very narrow and uh, it's <coughs> houses are developed people move in very concerned about the amount of traffic that's on those roads because uh, they're not in very good shape right now so that's my main question they will be required to do their half the street along down the full width of the piece of property uh, I, the improvements to county line road is included with the improvements to the park project okay so county line road will be will be widened on that side of the street so we are aware that there is a traffic issue and, and have figured out how we can address those two issues okay thank you thank you anybody else from the audience like to address to the council call for the vote call for the vote call for the vote by miss haney roll call compton yes covert yes haney yes mueller yes parker yes panado yes powell yes tyler yes Issue passes 8-0. Thank you. And I'd like to, I'd like to state uh, for the record here how much that I appreciate, and I think I speak for the council, how much I appreciate Landmark, for Greg, for ESI, to come to us in our work sessions where we could have a, 
a, a discussion about this. We could talk about it. Uh, we wouldn't have to talk about it in a setting like this. We had really good discussion, and I believe that this is going to be a tremendous asset for the city of Springdale. And I encourage other builders, if you have something like this, please come to us in our work sessions. It makes it a lot easier to work out. So, again, thanks to Landmark, Greg, and ESI for a, a great, great job. Thank you. Staff will prepare the ordinance. It goes to council on the 20th. Okay. Next on the agenda will be preliminary plats, replats, and final plats. Uh, RP 18-05, replat of lot 6, West Side Village, phase 2, east of Maestri Road on Highway 112, north side of Sunset Avenue, presented by DCI. Hi, I'm Leslie Tabor with DCI, and I just am here to answer any questions. Staff comments. Okay, this is taking an existing lot that has two buildings on it now and dividing it into two separate lots. Yes. Okay. Uh, please address all comments from utilities and other departments prior to final approval. Uh, indicate near at the rear access easements for both lots 6A and 6B. Please provide building setback for west side of lot eight, uh, 6A. Uh, remove final plat because it is actually a replat, not a final plat. Right. Uh, relate, relabel the street. It needs to reflect it being Sunset Avenue. Legal description is not shown, measured, not as recorded. The legal description needs to match. Uh, call out specific plat for all existing easements or label by block and page. Label structures as existing or proposed structure cannot be included in a replat. I did have a question about the um, access easement. Um, is that meant for cross access to the northern lots? I don't understand well, that particular. Right now, is there a, a desire to have access from one lot to the other? We, because we, I'm sorry, go ahead. You know, you're gonna have trash trucks that come back and forth across. You're going to have customers who come back and forth. They do it now. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't put that on there and one side decides to block the other off, th that's how it'd be in the future. We're recommending you come across uh, come forward with some access easements so that okay in addition to the one on the south yeah okay no that makes sense well okay. it, believe it or not we've seen some situations in the past where it's okay today but five years from now it's right. different owners we really have a problem okay as as yep. sir. I understand does anybody in the audience want to address this issue it'll be to the Commission this will be a motion subject to staff comment motion to approve subject to staff comments motion by Miss Haney second Second by Mr. Covert. Roll call. Covert. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Panato. Yes. Powell. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Issue passes 8-0. If you want this to go to council at the next council meeting, it needs to be in our office by Thursday at noon. The ordinance to accept it. Okay. Okay. Next on the agenda uh, will be PP 18-07. Spring Creek Farms, north of Cary Smith Road, east side of Miller Road, rephasing, presented by CEI. Good afternoon. This project was previously presented and approved by the Planning Commission for preliminary plat. The developer, in discussions with builders, has determined that smaller phasing would be uh, more marketable among the builders, and so what we are bringing to you is no change in the streets, utilities, layouts, lots, but it is a reduction in some phasing in the preliminary plat. So final plats will be presented in smaller chunks than what was originally conceived. But otherwise, there are no changes to what was previously approved as far as the project layout goes. Basically, you're doing all of those lots that are around that internal loop plus the open space with it so that you can have those in final plat and start selling those lots and moving it forward as those improvements are included. That's right. Okay. And we look at it to see if it could stand on its own if it had to, and I, I don't think we have any problems with the phasing plan as proposed. Okay. Could you state your name, please, sir? Tom Oppenheim with CEI. Does anybody in the audience uh, would like to address this issue? If not, to the commission. This would be a motion. This would be a motion to approve the revised phasing plan. It doesn't have to go anyplace else. It just lets them get started with it to uh, final plat a smaller section than what we originally intended. Motion to approve, revised plan. Motion by Mr. Culver. Second. Second by Ms. Haney Vocal. 
Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Panato? Yes. Powell? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Colbert? Yes. Passes 8 0. Thank you. Next on the agenda will be PP 15 01, Haberton Ridge Subdivision, southeast corner of DTP Horn Lane, east side of Haberton Road, rephasing, presented by ESI. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Jason Apple with ESI. Um, we are uh, kind of rephasing the first phase of the Haverton PUD. Um, it's kind of difficult to see there, but the, uh, the west side, which is mainly the duplex lots, um, we've restructured that to where that would be phase 1A, and then the remainder of phase 1 would be phase 1B. Um, the, the plan today is to finish <coughs> all of phase 1, but we were just, we're just kind of uh, wanting to finish the duplex lots first and be able to plat those prior to completing the full phase one. So that's uh, that's the extent of the rephase. Staff comments. We did have some discussion about revising this in that they had to keep two access points without having to open up a an emergency access to Haverton. <coughs> so it has been re redrawn so that there are two access points as we originally had proposed for phase one. It just takes out about, how many lots are we taking out of this 1A? 25, maybe 30, I don't know. Yeah, maybe 30. Yeah. Allows them again to move forward with and start selling lots and they can uh, final plat a smaller portion of it to start with. Anybody in the audience like to address this issue? It's to the commission, this is a motion. Motion to approve phasing need to be subject to staff comment also or no just subject just staff as, comments just as it was presented as it was it's, presented it's the line that's, that's on the, the drawing motion by miss haney second second by mr covert roll call mueller yes parker yes Panato. yes powell yes tyler yes compton yes covert yes haney yes passes eight zero thank you uh, one thing I forgot to mention at the very beginning, we do have a tabled item. It's on the back sheet of your agenda. It's B18-51, Edwards Design and Construction 2370 Ford Avenue. That's been tabled per the applicant. So if you were here uh, to address that issue, it will not be heard tonight. All right, next on the agenda will be large scale development. The L18-32, Butterfield Industrial, northeast corner of intersection of Parsons and Butterfield Coach Road. We have a variance for a deviation of landscaping requirements presented by EDA. My name is uh, James Gers with EDA, here to answer any questions you have on this large scale. Staff comments? Okay. Um, there are uh, a few comments left and you may have already addressed some of those. The gross and, and net area of the site on, on the drawing needs to be shown. Uh, specific location for the ADA ramps, the automatic irrigation system or hose bib locations for the landscaping. Uh, you need to deconflict the tree plantings within the utility easement. I think we had staff discussion and then you don't put trees in those locations. But Correct. You can come up with something different. Uh, update the adjacent property zoning, provide foundation landscaping for the d dumpster and street in improvements were required along frontage of Parsons or uh, a waiver has to be granted. Uh, drainage wise, I mean, um, engineering comments, um, I don't think there was anything left. It, it will have a constructability review. So those are the, the comments for the large scale itself. You wanna discuss what, what you're trying to accomplish with the variance? Well, on the variance, I believe we're trying to limit the bushes that will be in the existing easements that are on three sides of this property. Uh, it'd be the, along Parsons, it'd be along the Butterfield, and... What do you mean by limiting? Uh, taking them completely out? Yeah, taking them completely out, because it's chocked full of easements, underground and above ground, and we feel that if utility companies come in, they'll be ripping those out, and it would be... So what, what landscaping then are you proposing to do at the site? Uh, we're looking at doing foundation plantings around the building, uh, the, the parking lot uh, requirements and the islands, 
and uh, uh, the areas north of the pond and on the north side of the building. So the area to the east, there would be no landscaping at all on there? No, uh, as it stands right now, there's existing private easement that has a sewer and water line uh, running up to properties north of this that's serving a uh, house, I believe. Okay. So uh, if and when there's an issue with that existing uh, sewer service line, uh, any landscaping can be removed there. And I believe there's also an overhead power going up that. I think that's the area where we talked about trees wasn't necessarily, yeah. but landscaping in, in the form of shrubs and stuff could be done in that. And, the, and okay. they're done all over town on top of okay. trees. And stuff. Okay, what about on the, on the north side of the property? <coughs> on the north side, We have a concrete drainage channel that's draining the water coming off the property to the north, uh, taking it and directing it towards the detention pond. Uh, we're showing a 10 foot from the building to the property line and with a three foot drainage channel it limits the availability of placing plants in that area uh, adjacent to the building and drainage channel. Is it a concrete channel or is it just a swale? Uh, it's required to be a concrete channel to meet drainage requirements due to the, <coughs> the speed of the water. Okay. Then there would be foundational landscaping on the west side and then there would be landscaping along the street on that side too? Along or the west the where? west side we're looking at just the foundation plans around the building in lieu of the uh, plantings along the right of way because that's where the utilities are. What utilities are up there? We have fiber optic, we have overhead power, <coughs> potential sewer in that area if the sewer department ever required to take a sewer line to the north. Uh, right now the sewer ends and stops in our southeast or southwest corner of the property. We have designed the pond such that if the sewer department ever wanted to extend uh, that sewer line, uh, that would not impact our drainage. So we came off of the available land in that area to allow that future development if and when the Springdale Water decided to take sewer that way. Okay. Any more comments? Uh, does anybody in the audience like to address this issue? be to the commission how much landscaping I mean do you know the number of pieces that you're that you're doing away with versus what you're putting back ballpark just ballpark uh, oh if I had to ballpark that uh, <clears throat> probably about removing about 25 to 50%, uh, taking basically the frontage and then becoming the front of the building, if that makes any sense. So you're replacing the amount just in a different place of the property? Yes. Okay. So you're doing 50% less landscaping than what would be required? Yeah, just kind of ballparking, looking at the... At least 50%. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd be honest in telling you that I certainly understand the concrete swale, not being able to do it there. I'm not a fan of a what if, could have, should have, maybe somebody shows up, so... Um, I don't, I don't necessarily buy into the, to the easement piece. Okay. I, th I mean, certainly they can come through there, and yes, it could cost you replacing a couple plants. Is the likelihood that they're going to do it to the point where it becomes overly expensive over time? I don't think so. I also, get, I also understand the tree not having. I mean, I get not planting trees under the yeah. large trees, but they're surely smaller. Well, we've already had that discussion about, you know, that we, we, we're not asking them to put large trees under right. there. There are varieties of, of things that they could put under there. We do all over town. There'd be, no, there'd be no landscaping anywhere in the city if we didn't do it on easements. Correct. So this is this says that he's asking for a variance of, for deviation of landscaping requirements. So what are we, what are we deviating? 
Well, he's not doing any <coughs> perimeter landscaping because of the easements along there, which is on the east side and along the street side. Yes. You're really only proposing foundation landscaping, and that's it. Yes. Okay. And then any of the parking lot landscaping requirements. Which like, you are proposing what in the parking oh, lot? Oh, to meet the requirements. But what, what are you proposing to do with that? There's not enough parking spaces to require. How many spaces do you have? <coughs> I believe we're coming out at 12 parking spaces. Uh, on the plan, we're, we are proposing putting trees in the parking island uh, as you enter the site uh, adjacent to that row of parking on the west side. Okay. And then in the, on, the, on the west, uh, I, mean, I mean on the east side. On the west side, there's another parking island. We're, plan we're planning on replacing that tree. And then to the north side, uh, at the end of the parking, we're planning on placing those two trees and then uh, the, actually the, the three trees there and then on the other side of the channel north of the pond, those, that tree there. Any other comments? Uh, yes, if you'll come to the microphone and state your, state your name and address. I'm, I'm Bob Kleinard with R. Kleinard Construction. I'm working with the owner to, uh, to build this project. And I didn't quite understand, and uh, James and I may not be on the same page, but the landscaping will go all the way down Parsons and across Butterfield Coach. The only thing they took out of there from the original plan that I saw were the trees, the large trees. At the request of the planning department, they said we would we don't want those trees interfering with our utilities. Well, see, I thought that's what we discussed. But what we're talking about is taking out the shrubs and stuff around there too. Well, you see that line. I wish I had one of these pointers. Little <laughs> that line of landscaping goes all the way down, all the way. All that's landscaping. Those are bushes. They're not trees, but they are landscape. Well bushes, I don't know what you want to call That's them. That's the concern we had because we thought we had agreed to replace the trees and the landscaping was going to stay without doing just the trees. And we can do that without having to ask for a variance. But when you came back and asked for a variance, we were out of the understanding you were trying to reduce the amount of bushes and stuff that you're putting in too. So I'm, I'm not sure exactly what we're asking for. That's kind of why we're having this discussion. Well, this is the latest plan and that has all the landscaping down Parsons and Butterfield. We took the landscaping out on the north side because there's just a 10 foot easement. Okay. We had to set back 10 feet to keep and have them put a firewall in there and we needed a place to put our drainage swale. That would be sodded on both sides of the drainage swale. And then the landscaping around the uh, dumpster pad was, was uh, it was in, then it was out, and I think it's back in from what I've heard this evening. That's a minor issue. The, the, around the dumpster enclosure is a minor issue. So I can't tell. I think it shows it on this drawing that there is some landscaping. Okay, so the, really the variance that you're asking for is on the north side along the drainage channel. That's right. And I don't know for sure. I don't have the original drawing in front of me, but on the east side, that's a, that's a drainage ditch swale and it's got an easement up to that house with utilities and there's trees all along there so i'm not sure any landscaping would be okay uh, so basically you're asking for no landscaping along the north side where the drainage channel is and on the east side where there is the access easement and on the north on the west and south large trees and no large trees on the west and south right, right. is that but, correct but yeah, shrubbery wanna, there too. <laughs> just, just to clarify this. I want to see we're on the same uh, page. Mr. Kleiner is, is, is somewhat correct. Uh, the owner did come back to us and request that we come to the planning commission and see if we can have the shrubs removed. Okay, that's, but, that's why we're here. Yes. Because yeah. it was our understanding that you were trying not to do any yes. of the shrubs. So y'all got to figure <clears> out which way you want to go. Yeah, and so the, the plan you see on there is what we negotiated with the city with the trees being removed and having the shrubs, but then our client also wanted us request if we could have the shrubs also removed I didn't and we I wanted didn't you that. to make that decision I did not hear about that request that's why I came up here because I it wasn't clear to me <laughs> well, okay. now the last budget I gave the owner so. includes this shrubbery it includes this design here okay I think that's what yes. we're asking for at least to get this approved 
additionally that's kind of up to you and him if yeah. they can remove the rest of, that's up to this yeah, com that's, that's up to this commission that's our question okay the staff will recommend wow. that we do what we approved and what Mr. Kleinert is talking about we all agreed to. That would be the staff's <coughs> recommendation. Taking out the large trees under the, the, uh, the easements, not doing any landscaping along the north side where there's a drainage easement and <coughs> taking out the large trees at the rest of it. But the rest of the landscaping is shown on that plan is what we would recommend being done. So this, this what we're gonna vote on here. If we deny this, then they're gonna do that. Well. What we, if we want to do that, the variance that has to be approved is that there would be no landscaping required on the north side along the drainage channel okay. and along the east side where there is that access easement and that there would be no large trees put in the remaining areas that are in an easement. That would be okay. what this plan, rec that's what this plan shows. Yes. And to your point a moment ago, the large trees that are coming out, are they being replaced with shrubbery? There, according to that, there is shrubbery all along there. We're putting in the shrubbery along the, like you said, along Butterfield Coach and along Parsons. There will be shrubbery, shrubbery along there. And you're saying your client is now asked to go past that and remove the shrubbery? Yes. yes. But okay. if that's denied, this would be the plan. So this variance is for <clears throat> this plan? Well, so I mean, she, what they asked for was not to do any of the bushes or anything. Yes. Basically, it's not just a modification. The only thing that would be left would be foundation landscaping, <coughs> is what you're saying, and those trees that are shown at the entrance and the two that are on the parking lot on the west side. Okay. Sarah. So you don't have to take action on both of the things that they're requiring. You can vote on what you want to vote on on this. So if there is only one proposal you want to vote on, that's acceptable. You don't have to go through the motions on both of them. So if what you're saying, if this is the plan the Planning Commission wants, we vote to approve those. The variance that allows that to go into place is the variance that's being granted. Okay, Sarah, right? If they, okay, she said yes. Okay. So we're voting on this. That's that's your option. Which if, does um, not remove the excessive shrubbery. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Right. That yeah, that would be my preference. Would be to vote one time yeah. on this. Agreed. And not. okay, so you're going to call for the vote as presented with those variances that I outlined before. Call for the vote with the Call variances the vote. outlined. Okay. Call the vote by Mr. Colbert, roll call. <coughs> Parker. Yes. Panetto. Yes. Powell. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Colbert. Yes. Haney. Yes. Mueller. Yes. The variance passes 8-0. We need a motion for large scale. Make a motion on the large scale subject to staff comments. Motion by Ms. Haney. Second by Mr. Panato. Roll call. Panato. Yes. Powell. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Haney. <coughs> yes. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. And that's all she wrote. Motion passes 8 0. Thank you. Next on the agenda will be L18 34, <coughs> Paint Innovators, north of Treat Lane, east side of North 40th. Uh, there's Two variances on here, a B18-45, a variance for deviation of fence requirement, another variance for a B18-46, a variance for deviation of landscape requirement, and then we have a waiver, a W18-24 waiver of street requirements presented by EDA. I'm Rodney Barnes, the president of Paint Innovators. Uh, James Gertz with the EDA, the engineer on this project. Staff comments? Um, all comments from the utility companies and other city departments must be addressed prior to approval of construction plans. Um, all residential, commercial, and industrial development submitted after August of 2007 has to have all utilities underground. The maximum average maintained foot candles of all parking lot lighting shall be three foot candle. The minimum average maintained foot candle shall be one foot candle for the purpose of the standard. The average maintained, uh, I gotta get new glasses. Foot candle shall be calculated at 0 0.8 of the, of the foot candles. I think your lighting plan had a problem. I think we have to come back with, a, with another lighting okay, plan. Okay, I'll double check. I don't think it meets the standard, okay? Uh, drainage, I believe we've addressed the fact that this is gonna drain to the proposed Emma Street side, and I think engineering's good with the way it is. We're not increasing the drainage by a significant amount. 
the request that you're asking for is the um, waiver of having to do street improvements for Emma Avenue. Yes. If you all will remember, this is shown on our master street plan as an extension of Emma Avenue. They're willing to dedicate the right of way for it. Uh, they, they're showing for a future access point to it. It also gives them a way to have a place to turn around until Emma Avenue is approved. Uh, what is the um, variance for the landscaping? What are you asking for that and the fencing requirements? I believe the, those two. the variance for the landscaping would be again on the south side due to the drainage channel. We're taking drainage from the south property around our building. It's a concrete drainage channel. Per engineering, it needs to be concrete to meet the velocity for the water. Uh, the screening, I believe, is to the north uh, due to the residential nature of that property, but we are providing uh, Emma Street, uh, or yeah, I believe we are providing the Emma Street landscape requirements as a frontage road along our north border for that requirement, uh, but then an opaque fence uh, is what we're requesting not to place since it will be in the right of way and uh, if that road is oh. ever built well wouldn't necessarily have to be in the right of way well it it'd be, be on the, the edge of our, our property okay. Okay. Yeah. and their elevations of the building I can tell you all have done a really good job okay addressing the building elevations and working with us on that and I think the other waiver request was for the sidewalk on 40th Street it's currently not to the <coughs> current code it's not in the right location but it is continuous along 40th street north and south and uh, we will be doing our driveway cut to meet the requirement of the now uh, 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 sorry, I'll just blank on this on the driveway to put it in the proper location but the remainder is either in emma street future the radius and or won't match up to existing north and south properties without a transition there is an existing sidewalk on that side of the street right on 40th street yes yes it was built with the 40th street improvement several years ago yes and so tell me again about the landscaping requirement uh, landscaping bags <clears throat> what they're showing on the plan would be foundation landscaping landscaping along the north edge of the property of the parking lot no perimeter landscaping on the south because of the, the channel yes and no land, and then you have trees on the east side as well yes uh, and no fencing along the Emma Avenue extension anybody in the audience would like to comment on this issue to the Commission I'm sorry If you'll state your name and address for Leon the Hodge. The property is 123 North 40th Street. Thank you very much. Like I say, I'm not real sure. I thought I was coming in at these other two down here, 1845 and 1846, but they keep mentioning Emma here and drainage and stuff, and I'm, I'm kind of wondering if maybe that doesn't involve me. Okay. The Master Street Plan shows an extension of Emma Avenue on the right. north side of this property all the way through. Right. They are dedicating the right of way for that street improvement and asking not to do the street improvement. But they are taking their drainage to the north so it would come out into that area. I think that's the way it drains down. Somebody in engineering, if there's somebody in engineering, going to have to address that. I can't, I don't address the drainage. Uh, drainage. You're going to go north, you say? Okay, well, let, let's let the engineering department discuss that. Yeah, be because I, I, I know water it. goes downhill, and that's about all I know. I'm sorry. Usually uh, it goes downhill anyway. Uh, Carl with the engineering department. Um, I looked at the drainage report and the way it's uh, coming out on the east side, it drains to the north, to the northeast. Okay. And the report indicates uh, a significant increase or not a significant increase of what's going on now, there mm -hmm. now. Actually a decrease in the peak. Okay. It, it is a gravel lot now already. <coughs> right. Right. Are you having issues with uh, drainage on that side now? No. Okay. 
So what he is saying is what they are proposing to do is not changing that because, okay. yeah, that's what that's what engineering is indicating. There's no change to what's going on now with what the improvements that they are proposing. Okay. 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 Thanks, Aaron, for putting that up. As you can see here, the yeah. north side of this is where the Emma yeah. uh, new future Emma Road is going to be. Oh right. yeah, yeah. Right through there. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, they kept missing Emma there, so. <laughs> I was ask about maybe it's a little it. confusing because Emma's not there yet, but yeah, someday, <laughs> someday Emma will be there. Yeah. yeah, I've been waiting 15 years for it. I think. Well, I don't know how long. Sometimes, sometimes it takes a while. Yes, sometimes it takes a while. I likely won't see it at my age now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna address that. <laughs> you might. That's exactly right. Yeah. Any other comments from the audience as to the commission? So, so the kind of fence that normally they would be required to place there? They're not placing on the north side because the, there's no improvements to, Elms, to uh, Emma Avenue. But they're doing the screening along the property line, I mean along the parking lot area to provide some screening and landscaping, but they're not putting up an opaque fence. Aaron, do you have something you need to add? Just staff wanted to make sure because a property owner to the north was here. When you're voting on your decisions, that he's aware, like, you know, we're doing the, there's a variance for the deviation from the screening requirement, which is the opaque fence, like that where Emma is going to be proposed. His property line runs right through there. So they're, you, they're, they have put a variance in to pull that out. And then they're gonna also do the deviation from the landscape requirement because of the south side of the property and the east side of the property. So there'll be two variances yeah. for your property. There'll be, you know, like you're on the north side. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just wanted to make sure you, because you had came in this and asked staff, so I just wanna make sure when we're voting on that. I don't know if y'all are gonna take them all at once or. They will. They just they haven't decided if they're going to take a, like vote all at once on a or separately. So just when you do that, just so he's aware. So I would suggest we take them separately so that we we know which one. The first one would be yeah. the fencing requirements, which means there would be no opaque fence on the north side that is adjacent to this property. Yeah. Okay. yeah they, are landscaping. they are proposing landscaping along their parking lot areas. I mean, yeah, they'll do landscaping that goes with it, but there will not be a, a privacy fence or anything along that side of, of, of their operation. The fence that's there now, uh, it'd be a blessing if it was gone, I think. Okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm looking for this to be better is what I'm saying. So well, I, so it looks like from the design, it's going to be a lot better than so what's not, there now. I'm not opposed to not having the fence. Okay. As long as we're going to have a good landscaping I mean, according to what I seen that you showed me the other day, uh, it looked like it would be an improvement considerably over what we have now. And besides that, there's, they've let trash get between the buffer and my property, which is fence, and I've got a chain link fence there. They won't be removing that no. until the road comes in. You're on the north side up here. Right. So this landscaping, all these trees, and this landscaping here will be in between you and the paint innovators. Can you show the elevation shift? This is the proposed building. There we go. There. I think. Yes, sir. I just wanted to make sure you well, you're aware yeah. when they were voting. So well, I hope there. so. Maybe you can take them together if you want to. To the commission. Again. So, so do we want to take these together? Do you have any more comments? Anybody from the table? Do you want to take these together? Or the variances together, then we'll do the waiver separate. All righty, we will be voting on the variances uh, together. This will be a call for the vote for both variances. Call, call for the vote. vote. Call for the vote. Roll call. Powell? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Fernando? Yes. And also, we'll need to entertain a motion uh, to present to the city council for the waiver of the street requirements. They're asking for the uh, street improvements along uh, 
Emma Street to be waived and to leave the existing sidewalk as it is along 40th Street. Yes. That's, that's the waiver request. And the recommendation would be to the council to grant the waiver or however you want to move forward with it. Making a, a motion to approve the street, the waiver of street requirements and sidewalk as requested. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. I have a second by Mr. Panato. Roll call. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Panato? Yes. Powell? Yes. Thank you. Staff will prepare the resolution. The waiver goes to council on the 27th. Okay. Next on the agenda will be L18-35 Napa Parts Store. I mean, you got about on the large scale. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. I missed, uh, I missed something here. Need a motion on the large scale. Yeah. Motion to approve the large scale. We have a motion by Ms. Haney. Second. Second by Mr. Panado. Roll call. Thank you. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Panado? Yes. Powell? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Thank you. Approved 8 0. Thank you again. Oh, you're uh, next, uh, next on agenda, L18-35 Napa Parts Store with a variance of a B18-50, variance for deviation commercial design standards. This will be north side of East Robinson Avenue, west of FedEx Shipping Center, presented by Bates and Associates. Jason Young with Bates and Associates. Um, this is an undeveloped lot on Robinson Road. <coughs> Currently undergoing a property line adjustment to create this lot on the front street fronter side of the property. There's an existing detention pond, as you can see in the back, that we'll be utilizing. Um, the nature of the business is both retail and delivery for auto parts. Um, there was a question about the sidewalk on some comments we got today that it is actually outside of the right of way. Um, we are improving a portion of the sidewalk. Most of the sidewalk is in good condition, so we would like to improve the sidewalk in the location that it is instead of having to completely tear it out. Um, that was a comment that we just received today. I had not seen that previously. Um, we are also requesting the design standard variance and Eric Pace is here with Key Architecture that can speak to that. Okay. Uh, my name is Eric Pace with Key Architecture. Um, we've got a variance in for the design uh, standards. Uh, uh, I believe uh, just through our return comments that we had addressed most of the design standards in what we had done. Uh, Patsy, if there's something that was insufficient, let, let me know what it is. But uh, I think our primary request here is the, uh, the exterior material uh, being the, the, the pre-stressed uh, concrete panels. Um, what which kind of is finish do they have? I think that was our biggest concern is what kind of finish do these tilt up panels have? Okay, and I, and I saw on the comments that came in this morning that you wanted to see a, I guess a sample or, or something of that, and, and that probably can be something that we can get for you to look at. It, it's, it's going to have some kind of a textured finish, correct? Yeah, I believe it's got the, what, the finish on the concrete. Not smooth finish. Is there What's a the finish on the concrete panels? It is, uh, it's sandblasted. It's a sandblasted finish, and it will be painted. There will be stripes painted around the top. Okay. As shown on this drawing, you'll yes, have Yes, exactly. Okay. That was one of the concerns about the design standards. Uh, all comments from utility companies in another city, departments must be addressed prior to approval. Uh, underground utilities are required. Uh, the uh, parking lot lighting, did you submit a lighting plan? We got a lighting plan was submitted. Okay, we need to make sure it meets the lighting standard. Uh, and we also need the materials that you're going to use for the uh, panels. Uh, foundation landscaping for the dumpster enclosure. Did, did you address that? I added that today, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, engineering wise, it'll have a construction review. Um, the pipe heading north. Uh, I mean, have you, let me back up and say, have you had discussions with engineering today about the drainage questions and is there anything left? And, Carl, I'm going to ask you, is there anything left on this, on this project that needs to be addressed from the engineering side? Carl with engineering. Uh, the only thing that we had was on our GIS record, we have a drainage easement uh, across the middle of that lot. 
So if there is a drainage easement right there and we have the storm sewer going up north, then within that drainage easement has to be RCP. So that'll be my only comment. It has to be a concrete pipe. Right. Along the side of the property going all the way up to the detention pond, is that what you're talking about? Uh, yes. Okay. And that would have to be dedicated by, with a separate easement if there's not one already? Well, there is one already. That's, that's the thing. There is one and it's not in that location, is what you're saying? Well, we don't need the drainage easement right there, but there is a drainage easement existing before this project, according to our GIS records. So okay. since the drainage easement is there, there has to be RCP pipe going through that. Is there any way to change that? Is there any way to get out of doing RCP pipe? Um, I, can't, I can't hear. Well, the question that Gray is asking is, does it have to be RCP pipe because it's expensive, but it's in that drainage easement? That's an engineering question you all have to work out. Okay. So I don't even know why there's a drainage easement. I don't Sorry. either, but I mean, in my opinion, the easement would have to be vacated if they didn't want to do this. Yeah. Okay, so what what are they proposing on how to get the drainage from this side all the way up to that detention <clears throat> pond? What's the proposal to get it up there? If you if you look on the east side of the property, there's kind of a dark line that's going north and then jocks 45 to the northwest and then north. What's that supposed to be? It's underground drainage. Of what kind of material? I believe it was proposed to be plastic. I don't think we were aware of none of our surveyor records, anything we found came up with that drainage easement. That was a comment that we received today. So we were unaware that there was a drainage easement in that area. And from what I understand, because it's in the easement, it does require it to be concrete. Um, I'm, I have not, I don't know how far Jeff got as far as following up on that question. So, um, but I think that's something that we can work out further down the road. So in engineering, does it, is it required concrete or can they use plastic? I know they can't use metal. Uh, it has to be RCP within the drainage easement. Okay. Yes. So it's but just, if, it's a set deal. If they put it outside the drainage easement, they can use plastic is what you're saying? No, it, yes, that'll be private drainage. So it's a private drainage across that piece and they own all the property to the north. Yes. Was there a proposal at one time to split this piece of property so that you would have an easement from one property to the other? I don't think there was anything that would have shown a drainage easement up through there that we did. I, I don't know that for a fact, but to my knowledge, we haven't done anything with any pipe on the job. Okay, so engineering needs to work this issue out and figure out where it needs to go. I'd rather do corrugated metal or plastic even one than concrete there because it has plenty of cover on it. Well, that's technical issue that you'll have to work out with engineering okay. depending on whether or not it is in in is or is not in a drainage easement correct yeah that would be okay. something that we can work out yeah. okay. okay any other comments from staff anybody in the audience like to address this issue as to the commission so um so the variance for the deviation of commercial design standards is just basically they're, we talked about it, they're gonna sandblast it, they're gonna paint around the line, so that's the variance that they're asking for. That's, that's, your, that's the only variance you're asking for for design standards, is yes. that material, and you will submit us a sample or a cut sheet or something so we know what it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah, we'll get okay. you something. Okay. So you'd mentioned something about a sidewalk earlier, right? Well, he's not asking for a variance on the I was going to say, I didn't see it what on here, so. What you're going to do is extend the existing sidewalk across this piece of property because it doesn't go the full, and tie into what's already That's there. correct. Well, and the sidewalk just in general disrepair. I think there was a previous entrance in that area, so there's gravel, and it's just been driven over. And so the portion of the sidewalk that we want to improve, we want to line it up with the existing sidewalk. If it were actually moved into the right-of-way, it would be close to the street, and to me that's a it's safer for it to be more separated from okay. the back curb. And we are talking about a possible deviation to this plan to allow an access off of 412, which would affect how you're gonna deal that across. And, and we talked about the day, you'll have to submit revisions to whatever you decide to do with that. Yes, Greg just mentioned that okay. I, I, we'll I forgot to mention that. And then we'll work through that and we work through the sidewalk issue when we get that. Okay. Aaron, do you have anything? 
just from staff. So the, the clarification on the, the material requirement is uh, we can't use a pre, like a concrete tilt up panel. And that's basically what staff was saying we feel like we're getting because it's a pre-stressed concrete panel is what it's indicated on the plan. So you can use that if you have a textural requirement on there, some kind of textural application. Sometimes they use, man, they use slurry sometimes. You know, it, it just depends. It's, you can achieve it a multitude <coughs> of ways. But that's kind of where we're like, that's where we're deviating right now from the commercial design standard on that main material requirement um, that we felt like we weren't meeting. So just for you guys, so. Okay, so, but we know what it's gonna be now. Greg, I think Greg addressed that. But we don't know what it's gonna, uh, they will it's. submit the information to us and we'll know what it is. And yeah. if they do that, but if it's textured, then there's no reason for the. There's really no reason for the design standard variance. deviation if it meets that. Meets that requirement. Right. But it was on here for what you mentioned, Aaron, right. because you didn't yeah. feel at that time that it was going to. Yeah, be right. Textured. Because the, it's actually on the plans. It's like okay. just a tilt up. Uh, we're like, no, nah, that doesn't meet standard, guys. You got to, you know, indicate on the plan something that shows us that we're getting the the commercial design standard that the the city requires. So. Okay. Uh, that was one of the main because the building is all tilt up concrete panel. So. Right, and I, my, my concern yeah. was just approving something that we don't, that's not, that we can't see, but if it doesn't need it at the end. Well, if you look at the, at the elevations, and if it can look like what the elevations look like, I think we're okay if the material is the right kind of material. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're pretty good with the building. I mean, it meets the bump out requirements. Um, uh, you know, it's got the three foot offset. Um, it's got the entryway, the landscaping, you know, the sign requirements up there. It's got a, a change in the elevation over 100 feet. I mean, that's, it's pretty solid. I mean, you can do that within our, our commercial design standards and come out with some pretty, you know, common materials. It's just that one with the tilt up concrete panel gets hit, you know, unless it doesn't has a textural change or like some kind of uh, texture on it, we're gonna flag it, so. So should we, so should we remove uh, that request? Because I, what, so what happens if they bring back in the sample and it's not, it's Except still not what you want. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to approve a variance that they're going to bring something back to you that then you actually don't like, but we've already approved it. You see what I'm saying? Can we make it subject to or no? Is that, is that a Sarah question? It's a little tricky because we haven't seen the material, so they're asking for I a mean, variance. I, I'm generally, just from a legal standpoint, opposed to putting it in the hands of staff, something that should be designated okay. to the commission. So could we just leave it and, and, and table the variance and you submit the information to us and then we can determine whether you need the variance next yeah. time or not? And that if it's not what we think it's going to be, then we'll put the variance That'll back on the agenda for next time. As long as we don't table the whole thing, Greg, we get started. No. You don't have to table the whole thing. Okay. We just table the variance request. That's fine. And until you submit the material, you can't you can't use it. Okay. okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll table the variance request and let the rest of it go so they can get their grading permit and move forward with construction. Does that work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So variance is now tabled. We will entertain a motion for large scale. Motion to approve sub staff comments. We have a motion by Ms. Haney. Second by Mr. Panado. Roll call. Co <coughs> Excuse me. Covert? Yes. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Panado? Yes. Powell? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Passes 8 0. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on our agenda will be Board of Adjustments, It'll be B18 45. Rodney and Kaylee Barnes. No, we've already done those two. Sorry. Baders. We're done to see. Yeah. We've done these? <laughs> Next will be B18-47, Mike Turner, 503 Ewalt, variant from deviation from frontage requirements from 60 feet to 58 feet, uh, presented by Satterfield Land Surveyors. <coughs> Ricky Hill was Satterfield surveying. Basically, it's just the property was originally deeded 116 wide. We cannot accommodate two 60-foot lots with that property, so we decided to ask for a variance on both sides just to minimize them by two feet instead of having one meet the required 60 and one be four feet smaller. So we're just asking for a variance from 60 to 58 feet to maximize the use of the property. Staff comments? It doesn't seem like a lot. <laughs> it's on how tall I you mean, are. you could have one that's... that's uh, <laughs> That's the 60 feet and one that's 54 and you accomplish the same 
do that. Anybody in the audience want to address this issue to the commission? All for the vote. Ms. Haney, roll call. Haney? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Panato? Yes. Powell? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Passes 8 0. Thank you. Next on the agenda is B18 48, Northwest Medical Clinic, 2158 Butterfield Coach Road. Variance for deviation of sign ordinance for a second sign presented by Best Sign Group. Laura Tucker with Best Sign Group. I'm representing um, Northwest Medical on a sign. They have one sign currently on the, sorry, I'm not as familiar with my Springdale streets, on um, East Robinson. And they are asking for a second sign, which is much closer to their building on Butterfield Coach Road. Um, from my understanding, the original sign permit was pulled by the um, property owner. I think Debbie knows more information about that than I do. Um, I'm not sure why they put it there to begin with. It does not serve in the best interest of, of the building. So they are asking for a sign on Butterfield Coach Road um, in a similar size and nature that falls within sign code. It's just simply a second sign. Staff comments? The existing sign is there by the driveway on the north side of the property, correct? Or that's yes. where you want to put the new one? Um, no, the, the, the existing sign is, do you have the other uh, files we sent in that show? Sharon, do you have the other, do you, do you have the other file, the other that thing shows, that they submitted with the sign? That shows this. Because it's actually behind Arvest Bank is where the sign is currently, and Butterfield, um, I don't know how much you guys can see this, but um, hold on a second. Let's see what we can get. Okay. This building actually sits behind Arvest Bank if you were on Robinson. So you literally access this building from Butterfield Coach Road. It's not, I mean, you can get to it from Robinson, but you're going but down right this back now, alley. Right now, the sign for it is on Robinson. That is correct. Next to the next to the bank. Next to the bank and the propane company. I think there's a Titan propane okay, over so there. What you're trying to do is put one on the Butterfield Coast sign near the drive. Correct. As a second sign. Correct. Okay. In front of their entrance. That's correct. Okay. okay, that makes sense. And if you need, if you don't have this in front of you, I can show it to you. Let's see what we got here. Keep Just going. Just so we're clear, the sign that's currently there is on the building. It's not a right. No, no they no, have a sign no. on the building also. They have a road sign, monument style. It's a small monument okay, on 412 where, where you enter by Arvest. That's why I didn't see it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's, it's in yeah, six foot point. or so. Yeah. No, I, I there mean, you I, go. So right where your mouse is at is where we're asking kind of for a sign right in there. So where the, the show where the existing sign is? Can you go up to 412 and Back behind. Keep going. Now hang a left. Up there. Oh, that there. Sign there you go. So. I never really understood why the sign was. I know. Out. I didn't have nothing to do with that one. So. Well, it's yeah. I mean, even the sign on the building faces that sign. Yeah. So from Butterfield, the it's building the looks building. vacant. Yeah. So we're just asking for another sign to be put right there. Correct. Per sign code, we're only allowed one, and we're asking for a variance for two. Anybody in the audience like to address this issue? To the commission, we'll call for the vote. Call for the vote. Mr. Colbert, roll call. Mueller. Yes. Parker. Yes. Bonato. Yes. Powell. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Haney. Yes. Thank you. Debbie, did you need these? I brought these. Next on the agenda will be B18-50, Edwards Design and Construction, North Side. That's the one we just tabled, right? Yeah. Never mind. It's up here, guys. <laughs> okay, we'll go down to waivers. <clears throat> Brittenham Construction, 3325 Butterfly, waiver of sidewalk requirement. I don't believe they're going to be here tonight. I spoke with them earlier, and they thought they could just submit it and not have to be here so okay. so we'll tell you all that to next one next one will be w18-26 james harrington 
8965 West Miller Road, waiver of sidewalk requirement presented by James Herring. If you'll state your name and address, please. Uh, James Harrington, 8965 West Miller Road. Um, so uh, we're asking for the sidewalk variance because there's no sidewalks on Miller currently. Uh, we are on a four acre plot in the middle of the woods and um, we don't think you should have a sidewalk on that street. Staff comments? Well, my standard comment is we don't, I don't support waving sidewalks. Uh, if we don't build them in pieces, we're never gonna get them connected. So. Is there a physical region, uh, reason why you can't build it in that the terrain is too rough or there's a ditch there or something like that? Uh, there or is just the fact that it doesn't connect to anything? Uh, there is a ditch there. It's not huge. That's not a physical restraint, uh, but there's nothing else anywhere over there. I actually have pictures here of standing on the road, looking both ways. As far as you can see, it's trees. Um, we would be tearing out a lot of trees to be able to do that. Um, we also have, um, I have pictures of every single driveway on the entire street. Um, no one has any sidewalks whatsoever. So it would literally be a sidewalk on the front of the property line uh, connected to nothing. Um, and so uh, that's why. Would you be willing to make payment in lieu of improvements so that the cost of the sidewalk, you would deposit it with the city when the city upgrades the road and builds sidewalk on that, that you wouldn't have to pay anything, your, your portion would be taken care of? Uh, so we actually have already paid that because we are currently living there. Um, we have, uh, I've got the receipt in my coat, uh, but uh, we- You're asking for that, what? To we would like to get that back, yes okay. ma'am. Okay. Oh, um, also, I don't know if, uh, how much this matters, but uh, uh, there is a water and a gas line that runs directly right through the middle of where the sidewalk would be. I'm not totally sure if that is a problem for construction of the sidewalk, uh, but the easement's definitely there for Black Hills and the city already. We have put sidewalks on top of water lines. I assume so. It kind of protects them. Nobody gets into them if there's a sidewalk on it. Too. So you've already made a payment. Yes, to get yes a sir. get CFO, he had to make mm -hmm. a payment. Yeah, so we, uh, we didn't know about this until a week before we were ready to move in that the sidewalk uh, requirement was there. And so for us to get our occupancy cert certificate, uh, okay. we had to. You've done everything right. So yes, sir. Appreciate it. Um, and I have, uh, like I said, I've got um, Google Street View prints of a bunch of trees right outside of our yard. Um, I'd happy to show you if you're willing to look. If you want to present them, you feel free. Um, and, and basically, this is literally me standing in front of our property line. Um, and looking east and west. Dora, builder didn't tell you as part of the building permit that you required to do the sidewalk. We had a lot of issues permit. with that, but the answer is no. Because it is on your building permit that sidewalks are required. Um, uh, the last thing I have is uh, we took pictures of the majority of the houses on our street um, showing no sidewalks. Um, that's what these are. <coughs> So, Anybody wants to address this issue? Mr. Reed? Jim Reed, Springdale City Council, Ward 1, Position 1. That is out by where I live. Miller Road is really an undeveloped road. I mean, it's asphalt, but it's only because it's in the city limits. There's, no, there's trees along all of it. As far as I know, there's not any immediate plans to do anything there. So I would hate for us to take their money or keep their money for right now. You know, now, again, the, uh, I, I understand the sidewalks and for the most part I'm for them, but that road, that street, there's nothing along that street like that at all anywhere. Any other comments? Yes. To this. So I'm his wife. I'm Nicole Harrington. Um, a little bit further, a couple uh, acres down, or yeah, from us, there was a house that was built right before we started ours, less than like right at a year ago. And they don't have a sidewalk too. So I don't know if they got waived too. I don't know their name, but I mean, I'm just saying that there was another house too built recently, but everything else has been there for a while. So thank you. To the commission. 
Uh, so I want to make sure that you understand that by waiving this, you're missing the opportunity to tell your children and your children's children that you were the first ones to have a sidewalk on this road. You understand? <laughs> okay. I just, I just want to be clear. I don't want that to sneak up on you. So, so my, my comment is, you know, we've had this happen before, and the investment the city's making on walkability, development of the new park, that, that area is going to develop. And we've had in that area where the same thing as what you're saying, people say no sidewalk, and we actually would have had a lot of sidewalk available. So I'm a little hesitant as a, as a planning commissioner if the city council is thing to say that people who build a house have to pay for the, their sidewalk. What you're asking for is the city is going to have to pay the portion should a sidewalk go in at a later date. They're going to have to pay the portion that should have been really part of building your house. Uh, for, for myself, I'm more likely to say that I would not give a waiver, but I would agree with the payment in lieu of. And if the city council wants to change and build sidewalks in the city, then but I'm a little hesitant to take the money of the other citizens and say they can pay for your sidewalk down the road. So my only uh, response to that would basically be that currently um, there's zero plans for any kind of other buildings right. in that I, area. I understand. And so we would have a sidewalk that our kids could draw on, but no one walks, no one runs that road. It would never get used otherwise. Well, and I would also say Miller Road is a highly trafficked road because there is Shaw Elementary on it, like further down the road. And so as having one sidewalk there being the whole street and we would be the only ones a it's dangerous for our kids because right now we tell them they can't go past a certain line because the road is dangerous we have hills right there and our driveway is right by a hill like if you're not looking cars fly over it all the time i'm sure i think his name was mr reed who lives over there you could probably vouch for that people fly through there because they aren't right. aware but you so. could leave the payment in lieu of and not put the sidewalk and then instead of the city having to pick up your portion down the road, that money would be there and the city could use that money for other things. Uh, right, that's, and, and that's, while I see your point, we're asking not to have to do that. Right, I understand. Is the um, black dotted line, is that city limits? Or people uh, that are the outside Miller, the- Miller Road is the city limit line. Uh, everything south of Miller Road, which is our entire property, um, is in the city. There is a couple of islands out there that goes before Council next. Subdivision to the, next to the north is, to uh, is Springdale. The, um, the, you can see the subdivision that's across the street there. We have the backyards of all of that subdivision, but that's uh, Cave Springs. No, that's Springdale. No, that's Springdale, but those were built before they were annexed into oh, the city. Okay. So uh, they didn't have the requirement to build the sidewalks on oh. that side. Well, I apologize then. I actually, I didn't realize that was Springdale, so. Jim? Sorry. The, uh, yeah, I still, I still do not think that we should require them to even do a payment in lieu of. I think that maybe we could do a five-year bill of assurance or something like that where we're not actually holding their money. You know, it's just an assurance that if we do come in through there and do something, then they would have to pay for the sidewalk then. Planning Commission makes a recommendation to the council. Council actually makes the decision. My, and that's my only thing is that it's not that if, if there are certain circumstances where I feel like if it's if it's closer to in the city, if we're doing infill, um, things like that, if we have a road on the proposed master street plan. But I don't in these type of instances that we get a lot, I don't feel like it's asking the property owner to do their share. I feel like it's asking them to do more than their share in this case, because that's ex that's a it's expensive to put a sidewalk in and and I just would rather you know uh, they spend their money in town on you know or local business or something as opposed to putting in a sidewalk in that section that you know again if, if the city wants to put this on as a project that we want to take on then I could see it but if it's so far out of our radar right now then well it's on the master street plan but it's not on any capital improvement program or any bond program right 
Yeah, it's on the the master street plan. And and that's where I go to is if the city council wants to make that decision, they can spend spend the money, but I don't feel comfortable spending the the money of the citizens when that's on the master street plan. And uh, one touch on what Mr. Parker said, uh, we've lived in Springdale for about a decade. My business has been in Springdale for a while, so we're... I mean, we're paying our taxes for that stuff already. So, so the motion we have is a waiver to uh, waiver for sidewalk requirement, and uh, you're good with that. You want waiver for requirement? Yes, sir. This will be a motion. Uh, so that you have to the motion you have to make either is to recommend granting the waiver, payment in lieu of improvements, or bill of assurance. Those are the three options, and you recommend to the council which one of those you want to recommend. I'd like to make the motion that we grant the waiver by Mr. Colbert. Second. Mr. Compton. Compton. Okay. Parker. Yes. Bonato. Yes. Powell. Yes. Tyler. Yes. Compton. Yes. Covert. Yes. Haney. No. Mueller. Yes. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Staff will prepare the resolution that goes to council on the 27th. So we have to, do we have to come on the 27th for that? I will make the presentation. I just suggest you be there in case there's any questions. I'll be there. Thank you. Thank you. Last item on the agenda is BW18-27, Rick McGarra, 3060 North 48th Street, waiver of sidewalk requirement presented by Rick McGarra. <coughs> Justin Shockley, 3060 North 48th. Uh, Mr. McGarry was unable. Whoa, 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 whoa. Do we have representation? Are you authorized to represent him? I, I'm the property owner. You're the property owner? Yes, ma'am. So Rick was authorized to rep- represent you if you weren't here? Is that how it was submitted? I sent it, uh, he submitted to Ms. Pounders. I'm not sure how that went through. But he's the contractor working for me on this one, so. Okay, this is just a waiver. It's okay. Go ahead. You're good. Okay, go ahead. Uh, very similar issue to Mr. Harrington. Um, only difference on this one, and I apologize at short notice on this one. I have one copy of the uh, sur- uh, survey. So we, there's three driveways. Uh, we're sitting on a five-acre plot on 48th Street north of the low water bridge that washed out consistently. On the north side of that, there's those three driveways come down together with a bottleneck. My property on that, as opposed to an easement, is a 30 foot in width. And then the opposing properties, both on the northern and the southern side, their driveways adjoin, and we essentially have a very large approach that meets uh, 40th Street. You're building a house or something up there? Uh, yes, ma'am, it's at completion. So for formalities, staff comments. Well, I don't normally wave, but this is a pretty small area. I don't. Well, I mean, on a the other issue with it is, is even if we have, say, a 15-foot drive, and that leaves me seven and a half feet on either side, the neighbor's driveways are the opposing sides of that drive. And so I'm not real sure how we would go about uh, building that, without well, that restrictive driveway anyway. Anybody in the audience like to address this issue to the commission? Three driveways, or two driveways coming into one? Yes, yeah, so you can see the, well, essentially. So below the yellow line on the south side, there's a black line just south of that. That's the property line of the gentleman that owns the majority of the property south of mine. And then it's a similar issue to the north side. You can see where their other drive comes in. And so you have three three driveways that bottleneck together. And so it's it goes from three independent to one large <coughs> approach. I would say most of that happened before it was annexed. I, was I mean, that's that. some of that's been there a while, haven't it? Yes, ma'am. hasn't it? Any comments from commissioners? This would be a motion to approve. How wide is that? How wide is your front The property is thirty on the survey, so I own thirty feet of whatever the existing approach may be, and I'm not sure to the gentleman to the south. Motion to approve. A motion to approve by Mr. Colbert. Second. Second. Mr. Tyler. Roll call. Panado. Yes. 
Powell? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Compton? Yes. Covert? Yes. Haney? No. Mueller? Yes. Parker? Yes. Passes 7 1. Staff will prepare the resolution, goes to council on the 27th. Very good. Well, I need any additional documentation from you because we're calling for a CFO as of now. Well, you can't get a CFO until the council actually grants the variance. And what day is that? 27th. 27th. All right, very good. Planning director's report. I have one question. I'm working on next year's calendar. <laughs> and this is one of those jobs I hate to do, but it has to be done. Uh, New Year's Day is on Tuesday, which would be our regular meeting date, and we're proposing that we have Planning Commission meeting on the 2nd of January. Is that a problem with anybody? We'll get, if we don't do it that, we have to do it Thursday. It kind of messes up the schedule. If it's okay with you guys, we'll leave it on the 2nd. We, okay, we're going to have to start advertising that before we know it. <laughs> yeah. So we will have the full calendar ready for you next time. Um, does anybody have any problems with that? Okay, we'll, we'll schedule it that way. Uh, the only other item is our work session would be the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. Does anybody have a great desire to have a work session that night? We won't be here. We'll be out of town. Okay. I don't think we're going to have enough He doubled people. up this month, didn't we, in October? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Ah, okay. And, and just to let you know, the comments and stuff that were taken from the last meeting will kind of compile all that. We'll come back after the first of the year and see where we want to go with that whole thing and, and, and come back with that after after the first. I'm assuming we probably won't have a work session in, in December because it will be right before uh, Christmas too. The other question is do we want to try to schedule a Christmas event like we've tried in the past and if so, does anybody have any suggested dates? And suggest the locations because if we don't start pretty soon, we may be too late again. Yeah. You know, I think we enjoy getting together. I think that's worked out really well in the past. So, if anybody got any suggestions, I'm, I'm always a fan of Outback. It's just okay. <laughs> I can walk there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Outback work for everybody and let us kind of see what dates we can get. Let Debbie call, I'll tomorrow, call tomorrow, tomorrow and see what what nights we might have available, and then we'll set it out and kind of do a maybe do a doodle poll and see if we can pick a date for that. The official date for the Merry Christmas Springdale? 13th is the 13th. Yeah. Friday. December 13th. It's a Thursday. It's a Thursday. It should be a Thursday. Yeah, it should be a Thursday. Yeah. Um, I have made contact with uh, Randy Mulligan, who is kind of over there, and let him know that planning commission members that are there next week would help out with uh, anything he might need. So if you're going to attend there, we would like to have, well, I'd like to have her. We're going to help him out on passing out different things he needs. One last thing, um, as you know, Brian is running for city council. We wish you the very best tonight. Uh, we think you'd be a great add to the city council for the city of Springdale, and the, the uh, citizens would be lucky to have you. Thank you very much. I want to say one more thing too. Uh, speaking of the other night and, and the comments and everything, I just wanted to go and say that um, I want to thank Patsy and her team. And uh, also, Kevin, I thought that the meeting was really well run, and I thought it was constructive. And you know, even though um, people disagree, I, I thought that they handled it very well, and it was we stayed on topic. And thank you. so, I just wanted to say thanks to them and the team. Those comments. This, this, we we are trying. The planning department is trying. We as a council is trying to make sure Springdale moves. us handing out an olive branch to the Builder Society to help us out is a no. I still think that once we get these comments compiled, we look at it as a council, planning, and we continue out until we get this thing kind of narrowed down that we can present to the council. So I really appreciate everybody's work and effort on this really good. Any other comments? Motion to adjourn. Well, you got a motion? We're adjourned. Happy Thanksgiving.